Greetings, creatures, cadavers, and curious mortals, and welcome to Radio Transylvania. Or Video Transylvania? Eh, we'll workshop it. We are in the midst of November now, and although we strive to keep the Halloween season in our hearts all year long, another siren is beginning to call to us and whisper merry carols in our ears. So, now that we are transitioning away from October, I thought I'd share five of my favorite things to watch in November as we transition from Halloween to the holidays. First up, we have The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. This is an underrated Disney movie from 1949 that's basically a double feature, with some live-action library footage in between. It's probably best known for being the source material for Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, one of the most beloved dark rides of all time, certainly in my opinion. The first half is The Wind in the Willows, which tells the story of Mr. Toad and his motor mania. It's got fun antics, sneaky weasels, charming as hell animation. It's the complete package. And there's a part at the end, spoilers, I guess, where it's Christmas. This isn't really a huge part of the plot, if I'm being honest, but it feels like enough of a nod that it earns its place on this list. Then Basil Rathbone passes the narration over to Bing Crosby, and we switch to The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I don't think I need to explain why this one is great for the spooky times. It's pretty obvious, but I will mention that it contains one of the most criminally underrated songs in Disney history, The Headless Horseman, which is fun and spooky, and there's a Thurl Ravenscroft cover of it that is amazing, and I just don't know why Disney is sleeping on this song every October. It belongs on your Halloween playlist, that's all I'm saying. Moving on, we have Over the Garden Wall. This Cartoon Network miniseries premiered in 2014, and by the time I had watched it, I had already graduated from college, but it has such instant classic vibes that I just feel in my bones like it's been around for decades. The story follows Greg and Wirt, two brothers who are lost in the woods in a place called the Unknown. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, because if you haven't seen it before, and you should, it's best to just kind of go in fresh and let it unfold without too many expectations. But I will say that the turn of the century style songs are absolutely amazing, as is the animation, especially the backgrounds. Basically, if you turn off the audio and just watch the video, it's amazing. And if you turn off the video and just listen to the audio, it's amazing. And when you put it together, you have this absolutely fantastic two hours of content featuring the voices of everyone from Elijah Wood to Christopher Lloyd to Tim Curry. I put this one in the transition category because while it's eerie throughout, I don't so much associate this one with Halloween so much as I think that it's quintessentially autumn. In the first episode, the leaves are falling and the kids have a pants full of candy, and in the last episode, it's snowing and the trees are bare. So I think it just makes for perfect November viewing. Next up is the one you knew was coming, the Nightmare Before Christmas, a 1993 stop-motion animated film that is forever labeled Tim Burton's even though he neither wrote nor directed it. I have a lot of friends that consider this one a Halloween movie, and I know that there is a lot of debate on this topic, but I personally don't even consider watching this one until November rolls around. There are so many Halloween specials and movies that are purely Halloween, and so few Halloween-Christmas hybrids, that I think it just makes sense to save this one for the transition period. And also, side note, I will forever be mad that the Haunted Mansion Nightmare Before Christmas overlay goes up in September, which means that if you want to ride the Haunted Mansion on Halloween, you have to ride the Christmas version. Look, I think that the overlay is as cool and impressive as anyone, and yes, I love this gingerbread house and all the gingerbread houses with all of my heart, but to keep it up for a full third of the year is excessive. Anyway, right, Nightmare Before Christmas. It has one song that I distinctly put in the Halloween category. This is Halloween, this is Halloween. One song that I distinctly put in the Christmas category. What's this? What's this? There's color everywhere. And a whole score of creepy songs about Christmassy things that don't neatly fit into either box. Um, I don't really have to justify why this one is on the list because it's very obvious. So there you go. Now let's talk about my favorite Christmas zombie movie musical, Anna and the Apocalypse. This 
2017 British film is about an epidemic of zombie infections that just happens to coincide with the holiday season, which leads to a lot of imagery that you can just tell the creators had a blast coming up with. From decapitating a zombie snowman with a seesaw, to Anna's main weapon being a giant candy cane decoration with a pointy spike at the bottom. There's a lot of songs I really like in this one, and the one that I think you should consider for your Halloween playlist is Soldier at War, which is just all about killing the heck out of some zombies. On the other hand, if you like Christmas pastiche, you won't be disappointed either. There's a lot of blood, there's a lot of tinsel, it's a good time. For you, I mean, not for the characters. Last, but certainly not least, I propose a double feature of How the Grinch Stole Christmas and Halloween is Grinch Night. I assume you're all familiar with the former, the 1966 television special written by Dr. Seuss and directed by Chuck Jones. Honestly, this one in and of itself has a few elements that make it work for Halloween fans. It's narrated by Boris Karloff, it's about a villain hatching a scheme, and its most iconic song is just a list of Seussian insults sung by Thurl Ravenscroft. I really love Thurl Ravenscroft. But if you want to see the Grinch in a truly spooky adventure, you'll have to turn to the 1977 special Halloween is Grinch Night. A strange wind is blowing, and the Grinch is going to come down and terrorize Whoville. Can young Eukariah Who overcome his fear and stop the Grinch from reaching the bottom of Mount Crumpet? You'll have to watch to find out. Now look, are we talking about Chuck Jones level quality here? No. Are we talking about a classic story ripped from the pages of a beloved children's book? No. But should you watch this thing? Absolutely yes. It is indeed written by Seuss himself. It includes this exchange. You know, sir, I like you much better with my glasses off. You put your glasses back on and face the fact. Which is the source material for one of my favorite gifts and it has some weird and wonderful songs. Unfortunately, Boris Karloff was no longer living by the time this one was made, so instead The Grinch was voiced by Hans Conried, best known to most for portraying Captain Hook in Disney's Peter Pan, and best known to me for co-creating one of my favorite albums of all time, Monster Rally. He makes good use of his cartoon villain expertise, creating a Grinch who absolutely revels in his nastiness. It acts nicely as a prequel to How the Grinch Stole Christmas. All you have to do is come up with some sort of headcanon about what happened to Max in between the two. I have some theories. But basically, when you put the two together, you get almost an hour of Christmaween goodness. And that's the list! Thank you for watching. If you feel like I missed anything, feel free to suggest it in the comments. And if you love Halloween songs, be sure to subscribe to the Radio Transylvania podcast. You can find it at radiotransylvania.com, here on YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Every other Thursday, we talk about spooky songs, eerie tunes, and things that go bump in the night. Thank you again for watching. Catch you on the crypt side. where we discuss spooky songs, eerie tunes, and things that go bump on the floor. <laughs> Keep that in. <laughs>